Hi, everyone. Welcome in. Um, let's get everyone seated. Okay, perfect. Um, I, before I go through and introduce us, um, I did want to go through and start with a quote. I know this is a little cliche, but, you know, why not? <laughs> So I found this quote, um, finding a player is easy, getting to play as a team is another story. Uh, I wanted to start with this quote because we are here to provide you a solution to make all, everybody in your team play nice. And we're going to give you lots of little tools in here and there, give you little features uh, to make it a little more exciting to play as a team. So um, we're going to go over uh, Zoom Rooms for Touch today on um, collaborations and all the features that are included in this. Um, my name is Nishta Singh. I am our product, de product demo specialist. Um, Tom, I will have you introduce yourself. My name is Tom Rourke. I manage IT at Toast. We're Boston-based, and we make um, an all-in-one management plant platform for restaurants. Um, I actually met Tom. I've only met him through video. And uh, I'm going to have you tell your story because it's hilarious. Um, so they do have multiple Zoom rooms deployed all through their organization. Um, and he was telling me how their users have started to interact and getting used to only touch rooms. Um, so go ahead, Tom. Sure. We've been using uh, Zoom for about three years. Uh, we started with the Zoom rooms product with regular Zoom rooms. Um, we didn't really find that people were begging us to put them in every room. Um, we, we decided that there were conference rooms were too messy, and we needed to reduce the number of cables, dongles, phones, just things floating around in conference rooms. So we actually went with the D10 over here um, as soon as we heard, heard about Zoom Rooms for Touch. So about a month after hearing about it, we got these guys in there, um, and all of a sudden that adoption curve just absolutely blew up, and people were demanding them everywhere. So we deployed them uh, pretty rapidly, and we're, st we're still doing that today. We can hardly keep up with the demand. And uh, people have gotten so used to them, we, we have hardly had to do any training sessions. People are so used to them that if they walk into a room with a, you know, the old style of Zoom room with a Mac Mini, they immediately walk up and, and touch the screen. And they're really confused when nothing happens. Uh, this is absolutely far and away the standard experience now, and p people get upset if, it's n if they walk into a room and it's not this. Um, so a quick question for you guys. How many, uh, how many of you guys actually have Zoom Rooms for Touch deployed? Wow, good amount. I'm proud of you guys. You guys should be coming up here and doing this demo then. <laughs> um, how many of you guys have this problem where you have users coming in and touching your displays and you have to clean them now? <laughs> it's a good problem to have, right? <laughs> um, so we'll get started here. Um, what is a Zoom Rooms for Touch? And again, I should have you guys present because you guys all know. Um, Zoom Rooms for Touch is an all-in-one unit. It's just our software installed on uh, touch units that are running Windows or Windows IoT. Um, again, we wanted to keep user, uh, user interface consistency, so we wanted to make sure that no matter what platform you're switching from, if you're coming from mobile, you're coming from desktop, you're going over to a conference room, your user experience and interface stays very consistent. So you're not training your team members on how to use 50 different platforms. Um, so no matter what, if you're installing Zoom Rooms on a Mac, a Mac, a Windows, an all-in-one unit, your user interface is going to stay very consistent. And everybody that does not have Touch uh, deployed currently, please turn, uh, apparently turn to your right and just ask your neighbor. Uh, you'll, you'll know how easy it is to use Zoom Rooms for Touch. Um, so, Zoom rooms can, uh, for touch can go through and be expanded out to different kinds of spaces. Um, huddle rooms and training uh, small uh, telephone booths are very common. It's just really convenient. You don't have everybody squatting in your large conference rooms. You can go through and build out little telephone spaces and have those private meetings right away. Um, of course, you can go through and uh, install scheduling displays to this, as you guys are all aware. Um, and everybody can go through and reserve those rooms right away so no one's coming in and interrupting. Um, the one I do like is executive offices. Um, this one is the less common one, but if you, you can get an Adele all-in-one, they're about 24, 27 inches, and actually put this in your executive office, and this way you can have your conferences and your compute itself is not being taken over. You can do your work um, and go th and interact with people while you have your conference going on in a, a separate space. 
Um, and you can expand from that too. Um, we really like, at Zoom, we like to be comfortable. Um, so we've gone through and deployed a lot of Zoom rooms for touch and couch spaces. Um, our finance team absolutely loves that. So you can go through, uh, build out your offices. Um, if you have any couch rooms or just open areas, you can actually install these and everyone can go through and interact and have the same abilities. They just won't be as private meetings. Um, so, spec guide. Um, Windows OS, uh, we, I really like Windows IoT because you don't have to worry about Windows updates, security uh, updates and all of that. Um, it's just uh, up and running, so you can just plug it in, you're running Zoom Rooms on it. So if you're putting this on a mobile cart like we have here, I'm going to plug it in and um, it's just going to up and run Zoom right away. Um, I should have unplugged that so you guys could kind of see that experience. I can do that in a little bit. Um, but again, we, uh, it's just running Zoom, Windows IoT is, so you don't have to worry about your users exiting the application, messing with the, uh, messing with the unit itself. Um, it's just there for your masses to go through and use for conferencing. Um, Windows 10. Again, same concept, now you just have to worry about Windows updates and all of that and kind of uh, do your admin thing as you do and limit that. <laughs> you can go through and uh, run Zoom Rooms for that too. Um, we do support up to two displays. Currently only one display can be interactive. Um, the second display is there for your gallery view or just viewing the sharing content, but the one unit can be uh, interactive. Um, why am I looking that way? <laughs> Sorry, if you guys can't tell, this is my first time doing this. <laughs> um, controller is optional, so if you do put this in a huddle room, um, if you wanted to go through and attach additional peripherals to this, you can attach a controller just so your users don't have to walk up to it each time. Um, I don't know if you guys are doing that right now. In some of the larger rooms, yeah. yeah? Okay. Absolutely, we've started to hear that uh, as much as people love to touch them, they also really like to sit down. They do. <laughs> and you can sit down, by the way, if you would like. <laughs> no, I'm cool. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so you can absolutely go through and attach additional peripherals. If you're putting this in a huddle room that is a little larger and it needs an additional microphone, you can attach that. You can attach additional controllers, Android or iOS, it's up to you. Um, but you and you can attach additional control uh, uh, cameras because we do support multiple cameras. Um, what we're announcing this uh, end, of end of year, coming end of year, to, uh, is companion mode. Um, so you guys have all these units um, and you have traditional Zoom rooms built out with your big boardrooms and everything. Um, what you can do is set up another touch unit here and it's going to give you the ability, um, it's going to be very much of a standalone unit um, and it's just going, uh, this slide, okay. Um, <laughs> um, so. Your larger boardrooms that are already built out with the peripherals um, all separated out, you can actually a a attach a touch component to this. Um, it's basically your sidekick, as one of my customers asked me to call it. Um, uh, our spec guide for this is, again, uh, Windows Touch or Windows IoT, it's up to you. Um, you're gonna attach uh, Zoom Rooms to this with no additional cost uh, except for the hardware. Um, and this will support three displays, and again, only one of them being touch. Um, Setup is going to be very similar. Um, so let me explain companion mode to you. Uh, basically what it is, is, I'm gonna go this way. Um, it's going to be a blank uh, display. So you can go through and have your conferencing. And if you want to go through and bring in a whiteboard, you can actually approach this whiteboard. It'll automatically join into the same cloud meeting and you can go through and start interacting, um, start using whiteboarding and all of that. You can save it, all the fun stuff is there. So. Um, Let's go backwards. Um, setting up is very, very easy at the same thing. You're going through the same software. Um, you're going to sign in, and then it's going to ask you, is this a Zoom room, standalone, or are you attaching this to be a companion? So again, very easy setup. It's all the same software. Um, you can go through and start, again, you'll start sharing this. This will come back into your cloud meeting. Um, so let's do our product demo and not look at sure. PowerPoints. <laughs> So Tom's going to assist me with this, thank you. Um, again, um, this is going through and running digital signage right now. So again, we wanted consistency on the user interface. Uh, we wanted to make sure that all the components that are available to you on a desktop and a mobile are available in a Zoom Rooms for Touch. So we can go through, um, we can start instant meetings, you can join meetings just in case you forgot to invite the room to the meeting. Um, you can call out from the device itself, we can whiteboard, 
uh, sharing content, just the ability to go through do, and do direct share and having all those abilities. Um, and I can go through and call contacts. So if Tom was one of my contacts, I could just select contact and call out to Tom. You can actually, go ahead and hit contacts for me. Uh, we actually do real-time presence. So type in Tom, let's do a generic name. Um, so if I wanted to call, if Tom was not in my meeting, I can see real-time presence if he's in a Zoom meeting, if he's presenting, if he's in a calendar event, if he's offline, if he's on mobile, all the fun stuff. So you can go through and keep track of your people. Uh, make sure you don't lose them. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start an instant meeting. And you can use the pen with this, by the way. Um, actually, uh, we also have another Tom from Western Union sitting in the crowd. He has, uh, they have the issue of uh, people walking away with the pens. So that is one issue that we can't fix. Um, but you, the, uh, the pen is interactive. Um, again, we wanted consistency. So if we tap this, on the bottom right, we have our controls. And as you can see, duplicating our meeting client, our phone client, you can mute everybody. Um, you have all the join information. You can go through and invite users just as needed. Um, if this one had camera control, it doesn't. Oh, it does. OK, so th but it's a D10 unit. Um, yeah. So if it was a PTZ type um, camera, you can definitely go through. And you don't need an additional remote to go through and use your PTZ controls. Um, you can definitely just come through and use it within the unit itself. Um, I can go through and, I'm sorry, I'm trying to look at this. <laughs> um, you can start recording right from the unit itself. It'll ask you to go through and email, send you an email so it can send you the link to share. Um, and so let's do our whiteboarding capabilities, our superstar here. Um, so whiteboarding, uh, I have actually tested this a couple of times. You can have up to 15 people whiteboard at the same time. I've tried, I've seen 10 and I've seen, but I've, the max I've seen is 15. So if you want to have 15, in the, 15 people in the room come in and co-collaborate, that is definitely possible. Yeah, I think it does, this D10 does 10 simultaneous yep. connections. Thank you. Uh, we can go through and add multiple pages to this unit. Uh, we support up to 12. What are you looking for? There we go. <laughs> and we also do auto shape detection. So uh, your um, architects, your finance teams, uh, everybody that likes things a little more perfect, your spreadsheets, Venn diagrams, that can all be perfected out with auto shape detection. Um, you also have the ability to go through and save your sessions. And you'll select what pages you'd like and email it to yourself. This supports JPEG and PNG. So this way you have a copy and you can forward it on to all your users. Perfect. <laughs> um, and so dark you have mode dark too. mode. Boom. Perfect, thank you. Um, do you guys use dark mode a lot? Uh, we do because we have a lot of engineers that want to feel cool. Um, and this definitely, this definitely achieves that. <laughs> I don't know why engineers don't think they're cool. I mean, they create all of this. <laughs> they know they're cool. That's the problem. <laughs> um, I like to, and you can go through, sorry. You can go through and absolutely save it in dark mode, too, so picture-in-picture uh, -picture matches. Um, I'll have you go through and close out that whiteboard for me. Um, my favorite feature, I'm going to bring in my laptop. Actually, somebody up front really just pointed out that, you know, you have sharing keys on all of these devices. We can all just share to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's very dangerous. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to shut that off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> OK. So um, as you guys know, when it comes to sharing capabilities with Zoom rooms, we do uh, wireless sharing. But since we're sitting in a very large hall, also we have Wi-Fi, it's going to fail. Um, our failover is always having a sharing key on the top right. This does change per meeting. And you can disable the sharing key if needed. Um, so. I'm going to share my laptop into this. Maybe. There we go. OK, so I have the capability to actually go through and share over a screen share. Um, so I can go through and do my co-annotations. Um, if I'm your web design team, I wanted to make changes to the website itself. We wanted to take out this feature, add in more text. Um, all that fun stuff. I have the capability to make all those annotations and save it to my local drive. Um, and you can actually save it from the Zoom room too if you're directly sharing. So that is also an option. 
this was the biggest quality of life improvement for us and, and the reason that this really took off, especially um, in terms of like IT stakeholders. We were so sick of um, spending tons of money on, on dongles in conference rooms, people losing them, people just grabbing them and walking out with them. Um, cables are ugly and nobody likes to see like this cable octopus hanging around the room. Um, <laughs> this has made it so that the only piece of technology in the room is this. No, no phone, nothing. Um, this has been just incredible in terms of uh, kicking up our um, conference room experience to be a little bit more enterprise, whereas it was definitely kooky startup before. Right, and we wanted a clean solution, right? Um, a lot of the units itself will, again, have the pan tilt zoom controls so you can go through and move the camera around itself. You're not walking around with additional remotes that your users lose. The only thing you're gonna lose here is your pen, just so you're aware. <laughs> the pen's magnetic and, and hooks onto the back of the TV does, so that helps a little that bit. That does help a little bit. Um, of course, it's in the front, so people still walk away with it, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, I was gonna, um, so um, what else has gone through and changed in your organization when it comes to user interface for you guys, with especially the screen share? Um, I think, I think, I think the big one is this, this especially um, is actually a, a cultural change. So when, when I started at Toast about three years ago, it was about 200 people. Uh, it's about 2,500 today. Just explosive growth. We're onboarding about 100 people a month. Um, and when, when I started, you know, we very much had that culture of if you're having a face-to-face -face meeting with somebody, turn on, first thing you do is turn off your video. Ugh, I don't want anyone to see my face. Um, uh, that is now not a thing. Um, people um, insist that they show their video. I, um, I even, I see people be, like they don't feel like they're really part of the meeting unless they turn their video on. Um, the number of people that even call into the meeting um, has, has actually gone down. I, uh, people prefer to come in with the app just because that visual presence is, is really important. Um, the, the D10s, the Zoom for Touch stuff, Zoom Rooms, the whole kit and caboodle has been huge there. Uh, we've really expanded the number of offices that we've opened in the last uh, year. Congrats to you guys. Yeah, thank you. So we just opened a brand new office in Dublin. It's gorgeous. And we decided to put one of these in all 12 of the conference rooms. And that has been huge for, for solving problems where these remote teams feel like islands. Uh, it's really easy to uh, you know, put one of these on a roller in a pod you know, in Boston and then have one in a conference room in Dublin. And now that whole team just feels like they're always together. Um, we do have people that use them as all the time, you know, it's, this is just on all the time, and one in another office is just on all the time, and it's, it's like they're walking in the same room. Um, it's been just very, very cool to see that, to see that grow organically, and like I said, uh, we, probably get, we, we probably get three or four requests per week now for people saying, I, you know, I, I just want one for this thing, and it, it's just <laughs> yeah. so much um, demand. Do you have any executive offices? We have, um, we have some executive offices. We have some big boardrooms. Um, we, the 75 inch D10 is coming out at the end of the year and we're really excited about yes. that. Um, uh, mostly we use the rolling ones um, for, for that, uh, but yeah, we do. Yeah, and you guys aren't limited with, um, you have D10. Uh, Avacor is also an, an up, up and coming uh, that's doing really well with us. Um, you have Dell, um, you have Aver that has a 65 inch. So um, you kind of have a lot of options here. You just need flex payment, <laughs> like Tom here, since he has millions of them. <laughs> that's all you need. So go to your hard, our hardware partner and say, I want 10, but with flex payments, so they can work that out. <laughs> Um, this is also really nice um, if you guys are coming out of healthcare, um, having giving access to your patients to immediately be able to speak to their doctors. Um, if you're in education, having the interactive whiteboarding with all your students is really nice because when they're coming in through their mobile devices or they're coming in from their desktops, uh, they can all go through and co-annotate together. So bringing classrooms together globally. Um, if you guys are in architecture, everyone drawing over the floor plans is really convenient. Um, finance will go through and do their numbers. Um, anything, right? That this use case kind of fits all parts of your organization. Um, I know I talked really fast, but <laughs> like questions, yes. Current, 
Um, so the question asked is, can you, um, can you go through and share the session with everybody that is already attending the meeting? Um, currently, no. Um, you would have to just go back into your calendar invitation and attach it as an email there. Go ahead. Yes, um, I can, so go ahead. C-P-T-S-Y-J. No, you're fine. Please ask questions. That's what we're here for. So you can do any screen. Any screen, so I'm gonna pull here, I'll pull up something different. Um, um, let's do, let's do our support page. Um, we also have hardware guidelines, by the way, if you guys are new customers. We do have all the conference rooms built out. Um, so we're going to do the all-in-one huddle, and we'll give you all of the options that are listed. So if we look at a architect, um, so if I wanted to go through and, co and if you would like, you can feel free to come up and co-annotate. Yeah, sir. come play. You can handle, yeah, like, you can play. handle like 10 of us. We can do this. Um, so you can go through and co-annotate over that. Yes, exactly. Especially all 10 of them all interacting. Yeah. So, okay. So, I'm going to save this. I have more. Actually, save that. So, now, there's my file. Oops. So that's what the save file looks like. And so what mode is that on? Is that just whiteboard mode? Yeah. Um, it's just automatic that annotation turns on. Um, you as the host do have controls to turn off annotation. Um, that's a lot of fun when it comes to education and people drop on things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we also have the ability um, on the desktop client now to see who is co-annotating. Um, so if somebody is being inappropriate, you can absolutely tell now. So everybody, don't be inappropriate because now we have the ability to tell. Yes, sir. It's only for Windows. Um, iOS itself does not do anything touch-related, um, so it's just limited there. If you're, if you're zooming in from an, from an iOS device, like it'll work, but right. these guys run off Windows. One more time. I think it was just um, PNG. PNG. So file formats, again, PNG or JPEG. I think this one came out to be a file default. Let's see. It's PNG. Um, it's just an image, so you, can, you won't be able to re-edit the image, but I can pull up, since the annotations are saved, um, I can co-annotate over the saved image. So as my V10 is, so he can go, Tom can go through and actually co keep annotating over it. Yes, sir? Uh, question, uh, and, uh, more of a design question, really, in deploying these globally with uh, relying only on wireless connectivity for sharing, uh, essentially eliminating the wire, the ugly wire, uh, do you guys have any issues with reliability there, uh, video, that sort of thing? Sure. These guys have um, ports in the back, so we plug them in at the wall. And then um, in terms of like the wireless screen sharing, never had an issue. Never, never had a single issue with that. Sorry, I'm going to go to the left and I'll come back to you. Yes, sir? So if you've got multiple of these custom devices, you can pull and annotate simultaneously across different devices. Ye yes. Um, so here, I can, if you guys want to join from your phone, please feel free. Um, I'm going to join from my phone. And I have my settings set to not join audio, so no echo issues here. <laughs> um, Here's your meeting ID if you want it, right? 639, um, 679, seven, nine. that's a lot of nines, 9038. So I'm going to come in for a mobile device. I have an Android, um, and I have the ability to go through and co annotate as I go. I'm going to. Now I have a million people joining. I see everyone. It's <laughs> 9038. <laughs> yes, sir. 
Do we support what sharing? Proximity sharing, yes. So it's all done through ultrasonic proximity. It's wireless. Um, not that you're not limited. Um, we do support HDMI if needed, so no big deal there. Um, but this is all done through wireless. Um, it's just going over your Wi-Fi. Um, and everybody that, uh, your Zoom client actually has, so the Zoom client itself has a share screen button um, on the desktop client itself. So you walk into a room, all you have to do, because it, you're in the, within the walls and it does detect that, um, you'll just like share a screen and it goes through and shares into the Zoom room you're sitting in. It's about a 15 foot proximity. Yeah, so most times you don't even have to enter that code. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's really It's really, nice. really, really cool. <laughs> what, I'm sorry, one more time? Oh, it can do that. The, yeah, the D10 has everything you need. It just, just yeah. does that. No, so you don't, you. right, you don't need that secondary controller because you do have the controls built in. This, again, the secondary controller is optional. Um, but yes, you can go through and do all the co-annotation when it comes to an all-in-one unit. I have more of a people question, Tom. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that a lot of the, you guys have a very high uh, rate of people using their video. Uh, that's not the case at my company. Sure. Virtual background. <laughs> um, definitely, it starts at the higher level. Executives should always be showing their video. You shouldn't have any executives who are shy or stingy about showing their face. Uh, that's huge. Um, we, I think it starts kind of, I really, I, that's kind of the best I can say is at that high level, have your executives, you know, continue to promote that message that we're all friends here, you know, no one's, you know, <laughs> the, unless, I mean, obviously I understand, like, you know, there's something in the house that you don't want anyone to see, some artwork that's embarrassing or whatever, sure. Um, but um, it, it's kind of like, you know, we're all, we're all here to connect as people, so let's, let's, let's try to facilitate that. Um, I believe one, at one point we had a, a somebody came up and, and did, like, just a quick five minutes on this, and they were saying that the bandwidth is just so much, uh, you have so much more bandwidth when you're showing your face, you can really get more of the message out of that, and that's just a super valuable. You know, um, you're going to understand things 10% faster, and that's worth it. Just to comment on that, we uh, we actually our IT team during onboarding showed up to a meeting with bags over our head, <laughs> real paper bags. We basically <laughs> said, look, if you're going to join a meeting, you're not going to walk into a conference room with a bag on your head. <laughs> So video adoption, um, I think you can kind of encourage um, hiding stuff. You have virtual background. You can go through and upload your own images and everything. Um, but I think it's really uh, good to encourage just the fact that, hey, you live in Dublin. I live in the States. I don't know what you look like. You could be my boss. Let's turn on my video, and then maybe you could encourage them to. It'll take a little bit, but just encourage, keep your video on. It'll start encouraging everybody else to turn their video on too. Plus, plus that stuff that's in the background, like cats like screwing around in the background, is hilarious. Everyone loves that. Yes. <laughs> I did a demo once, and it lasted for 30 minutes longer than it really needed to, but everybody brought in their dogs. Uh, I now know about 12 people's dogs and all throughout the area. Um, I know what somebody's son looks like because he absolutely walked into me. And so it's just, you know, like getting, becoming familiar with your coworkers is very important. Um, so you can go through and collaborate and be comfortable. So um, kind of seeing, sometimes seeing personal stuff is nice. You can go through and say, oh, you're a Chiefs fan. Let's connect over that. Um, so just seeing and um, kind of finding similarities through video and encouraging that is really nice. Spotlight video really does well when you need to get it down and have one person <laughs> And then we have gallery view, 25 person gallery. So you guys are hosting all hands. Um, when we do all hands at Zoom, um, it's a meeting. We don't do webinars because we want everyone to interact. Um, so 25 person gallery view over Zoom rooms and everything. It's really nice to see all my coworkers. Yes, sir. It's in some of my like 10 or 12 person conference rooms in my like 15 and larger, not right now. Um, yeah, just because how does, how does the depth. Back then with the 55 inch with Excel docs on, on the D10, it's in a large conference 
I actually haven't had much issue. People will zoom in on the computer and it'll, oh. it'll zoom in here, you know, just your normal, you know, command plus sign to zoom in. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't think I've gotten much negative feedback on these at all. I think the only feedback I really got negative about them was I don't like getting up out of my chair and sometimes having to touch it. So for those people, you know, um, some, some of these rooms, we deployed these replacing the old Zoom rooms. So we had the, um, the stands and the iPad uh, left over from those rooms. We just take that and plug it in and it connects seamlessly. It takes two minutes and you're good to go. Now they can use both. Um, so that, that was really easy to fix that complaint as well. Yes. Yeah, I, Get those I, 86 soon, inch, right? the 75 inch, yeah. Um, we also have, sorry, really quick to answer your question here. Uh, we added a feature called Join From Room. Um, so everybody that's sitting at the end of the table who's viewing all this screen sharing, um, we've added in the uh, client itself, there's just three dots. You can actually join from room and you will come in muted without video so you don't have to worry about the echo. You can view all the content on the desktop itself. Sorry, we'll have you next. Um, go ahead. Oh. What do you mean, what types? Okay. Yes. Um, so any, so Aver, Logitech, um, Crestron, um, those all-in-one units I'm assuming is what you have. Um, but yeah, all the, any, any camera that has pan tilt zoom controls, we will absolutely go through and support that. So you don't need that additional controller. Go ahead, sir. Yes, yeah, absolutely, and we do see that with our double, with, with the double setups. So my question actually is, is there any way, is it possible for this unit to segment the screen so it's a single screen to have a gallery view and it both faces the face of the wall? I don't think this one does that yet. Currently, no, we don't. Is there any, is there any prospect of that that you can point to? I know our product is aware of it, um, because we do have side-by-side -side mode, um, what you're describing for the desktop client currently, but not in Zoom rooms. Yeah, I think if you're in a meeting and you go in and you put it into side-by-side -side mode and then share your screen, it would have that effect, I would think. Yeah, you would just have to share your Zoom window at that point, make sure that's enabled, and then you could see content plus uh, your participants and manipulate that. Yes, sir. It'll, it has to be only that one touch, it can't be, yeah. So if you do have your Zoom rooms built out, you put in the companion mode, that will be your touch component. Yeah, apparently. Oh, yes. I, I think you asked the question, so you said you had three displays, so two will be non-touch and one will be touch. Correct. So the companion whiteboard is a touch, touch zone. Correct, and then if you're just building out Zoom rooms without companion, then only one display can be touch. Um, just the ability to get rid of your traditional whiteboards and um, first of all, having that ability to go through and instantly save all the annotations and all the work that's being done. Um, so bringing that in, um, having that in the back and having the feature of readily available is really nice. Um, and then going through and co-interacting with everybody on the cloud with touch. So. Me personally, I'm probably gonna put one in like my really deep executive rooms um, where I don't want someone to have to you know, walk for 30 seconds to the front of the room. Uh, and they can just get to the middle right there and, and do it right there. So if you have um, larger conference rooms built out, um, oval rooms, um, any size rooms, you can go through and put in a component in there. How many units did it take until you saw your user adoption spike? Sure. Um, yeah, that's an awesome question. Yeah. I'm trying to remember how this went. So I would say two. Um, I started with my loudest complainers. Um, I started with, and I started with my people who were the most tech savvy. Um, uh, and the people that already had, so I actually took, I believe if I remember correctly, we took a room that was already a Zoom room and turned it into one of these. So they already knew how to use Zoom rooms, they already liked it, they got this and they were like, oh wow, I can just, I can just touch it now, incredible. Um, and I made sure that I used a team 
that was going to do a lot of whiteboarding and, and visual stuff. So engineers, uh, they fit all that criteria. Um, so once, once I had them on board, um, it was really easy to put them up in other rooms. And so that, that kind of got the ball rolling where it really exploded actually was in my recruiting rooms. So in my interview rooms, we put these up. Um, interviewing it was such a horrible experience when we talked about remote interviews. Someone would have to bring a laptop into the room, um, connect it via HDMI. Uh, it would take five minutes to do this. Sometimes the, sometimes the code on the invite wasn't right. Like, it was just horrible. Um, you could waste 10 minutes of a 30 minute interview just getting set up. And that was, that was so awful for the interviewee and for the interviewer. So having these set up, it was just like, okay, like, you know, I show up to this room. I don't even have to have someone from the recruiting department here to hold, me, hold my hand. I can just walk in, press the button. Uh, my uh, remote uh, participant is already on the meeting. We're good to go. We can just start. Um, we put those in all of our recruiting rooms, and after that, it was wildfire. So now they're, they're in most rooms now. We're doing a pretty large-scale refresh of our headquarters. So as part of that, we're just doing all the rooms over. Um, if you don't, sorry, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of an organization are you in? Consulting. Consulting, okay, so perfect, yeah. For recruiting, um, connecting to your clients and everything, it would be really nice for them to just walk in and tap to start, so. Yes, um, so I actually had uh, one of my colleagues uh, build up the pictorial for that. Um, so if you wanted to attach the Logitech rally mics to this, um, all of that capability is there. Um, if I can find the pictorial, I can show you that too. I can, you can uh, find me and I'll show you that. Those, those little like Jabra Puck speakers, that, they're actually in the Jabra booth upstairs. We have the 710, I think. Those things work awesome. Um, I believe they're Bluetooth, so it's really easy to stick those in a large conference room table. We, we use those for a lot of our expansions. Yes. Would you like to speak, Tom? Sure. <laughs> Sorry, wrong Tom. Different Tom, um, which Tom? Different Tom. So Tom from Western Union, uh, we just visited their office and they have about multiple of Avacores, so 200, yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Thank is the you. only thing I've used, and oh. this is like you turn it on, you put in your Zoom credentials, you're done. This is super easy. <laughs> That's super easy. Um, we do, uh, <laughs> sorry, I love my company. Um, uh, we do software updates through the admin portal. Um, so you can push, um, I can show you the admin portal. You can actually push all updates, no matter what kind of Zoom room it is, um, through the portal itself. Um, and everything is centrally managed. So I'm going to have you read that off one more time for me. Q W E F T D. Delta? Yep. Okay. Okay, so um, everything is centrally managed. Um, you can actually, so I'm gonna show you Zoom's um, Zoom rooms, so please avoid, this is a lot of our test accounts and stuff too, <laughs> so please avoid this mess. <laughs> so when you go into your device list, you can actually, again, we have location hierarchies that you can go through and customize. Um, so if I just wanted to go through and update France today because of the time zone difference, I can come under France, Actually, I'm not an admin. Um, I can actually come under France and only push updates there. You can do it on a location hierarchy level or you do it on the individual room itself so you can <coughs> test it and everything.
Sorry, the last part? Not, not, a, not a one. Um, I think that out of the 50 or so of these that I've deployed so far, I think I've received one in Dublin where um, updating wasn't working on it and D10 replaced it within like a day, a day or two. It was easy. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, wait, no, not during the call. Um, you would have to exit out of the meeting itself. Um, well, what do you mean, talk? Just. So, for example, you've got an A camera in front of you, but it's inside. Oh. And they want their client to potentially move away from the front room to the side. So, you're going to need to activate the camera on the D10. Yes, absolutely. So, I run all of our virtual demos, and I have multiple cameras installed in a lot of our rooms. Um, all I have to do is select switch camera, and then I can go through and do that. Um, we, so um, we're trying to build out an executive briefing center. Um, so if you guys do have those, you can go through and attach multiple cameras, have it point at specific places, and then go through and sh um, show your those cameras. You also have, this is not Zoom room specifically related, you have the ability to go through and share two cameras at the same time. It's just seen as an input, and you just go under share, and you'll have camera. So you do have those capabilities too. Yes, sir. You can't do split screen. You can share two cameras at the same time. So if you have a host view and you have an audience view, yeah. the host view becomes a thumbnail, and then the audience view comes into focus. Side, you can view yes. But you can't do side by side? You can. No, um, you can view side by side on the desktop, but not in the Zoom room. Yeah. Um, so if you install multiple displays, that kind of creates the side by side, but yeah. Yes, um, and you can do a document camera. So if this is a class, you can point this down um, to the documents and everything, and keep your host view. Nah, I know. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we're kind of going the other way. We're not a Windows shop. Uh, so we were trying to figure out a way that we could use iOS, uh, iPads, and Windows as the same devices for doing interviews and things like that. But it always has to be signed into an account. Um, can I follow up with you on that? Yeah, because I know we've had a lot of people ask, and I know, again, product is aware of this, um, but I'm not quite sure where we're at on how we're going to um, make that a companion. It's a good idea. I like it, too, but. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'll, we'll connect. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? We have a lot of people asking. I'm going to say yes to that one. <laughs> we have a lot of people asking. So, And especially because D10 units, you can go through and link them up. Um, we have a lot of people asking. So, Yes, ma'am. We kind of break our rooms down into profiles, right? So we got the huddle rooms and, and so on and so forth. So. Um, a lot of our rooms are the smaller variants where this actually, I mean, this, these can get fairly loud. Um, uh, I've, I actually have to turn them down sometimes because people can hear them through the wall. Um, so they can get pretty loud um, and they can, they, can, they can hit a 20 foot deep room, no problem. So pretty much my, my two person rooms up through my 12s, pretty much, this can, this can cover it. Um, some of, the, some of the really long, deep rooms, I'll add an extra speaker in with one of those Jabra, ten, um, the 710s. But um, right now, it's not super robust, the amount of stuff I need to add to them. So how many of you guys are going to get units now? <laughs> it's always nice to test them. I mean, Tom started with two, so. I'm happy to rant and rave after <laughs> if you want to uh, talk about, about, about what the experience has been like setting these up. I think a big part of the adoption for us was just how cool we, as an IT team, thought they were. Like, we just liked, <laughs> we liked that it took two minutes to set them up. <laughs> so, so a bit, we were just like, we're gonna deploy them everywhere, and hopefully everyone likes them. And then everyone was like, oh yeah, we want more. So, it worked. <laughs> yes, sir. I got you, yes, sir. I wanna go with them first, yeah. You guys are talking about mobile cars. Why don't we move it around? What all do you have to plug in? Um, There's one cable. 
Um, yeah. There's one cable. They work off Wi-Fi. You want to unplug it? We can unplug it. We can so, unplug it. We can unplug it. You yeah. can unplug it. Um, yeah. All you have to do is uh, plug. This is on Wi-Fi. We do. I? It's right down there. Um, so this is on Wi-Fi. We do prefer ours uh, hardwired. But you unplug it. Uh, so with Zoom Rooms, it's uh, in general, if you sign in once, you don't have to sign in again. Um, so if you unplug this and replug it black, back in, it's just going to boot back into Zoom Rooms. We do have a couple of the rolling ones um, in outer space, spices, spaces in like a cafe area, for example, or near some couches and stuff. And they get moved around. They get dragged around. They get brought <laughs> into other conference rooms. They get, um, so we have some that are on like a sign in, sign out policy. Um, they're, these are def the, the ones on rollers are definitely picking up steam in the org. Uh, starting to get a lot more requests for those for engineering pods and, and team homes and stuff like that. Um, they've become they've become really popular. And it's really nice. So if you guys are um, if you guys have a lot of international offices or have temp offices internationally, you can go through set these up and then just ship them out. And all they have to do is plug it in. They have a Zoom room instantly. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. What are you going to go with him first since he did the ask? Well, you, you oh, have you had anyone complain about the lag of writing on a D10? It's not just a pure whiteboard experience. You have a little bit of delay. Um, I actually haven't gotten many complaints there. I'm sure if I went fishing, I could get them. Um, uh, I don't know if, or if you're on the latest, very latest firmware. I haven't ha noticed too much of that issue. I mean, you're never going to get. I mean, I shouldn't say never. Technology is awesome. You, right now, it's. I think it's hard to get exactly like a regular whiteboard. But this, I think. I think that the um, the other features, like being able to save it, is is more than a makeup for it. I never have to pick out my phone and be like, let's take a picture, and then I'll send it all to you guys on Slack later. That's that's gone. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen much of the issue, but also um, I think my users are just really excited to have them. So, so we 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 haven't really um, pitted them against anyone else in that respect. So, um, I do apologize. We do have to end the session. Uh, please approach me. We can go through to answer your questions. Um, everyone, thank you so much for coming. Tom, thank you for so I'm much hang for out. being my guest speaker. <laughs> And I'm out. Nope.